Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today I want to talk about Nichelle Nichols, who was an American actress, singer and dancer, best known for her role in Star Trek, the original series, and she made other appearances in Star Trek movies and spin-offs over the years. From 1977 until 2015, she volunteered her time to promote NASA's programs and to recruit diverse astronauts, including women and ethnic minorities. I think that's a very good thing, but sometimes in America, it seems to me that people get a little bit confused between reality and television. For example, um, in this case, Nichelle Nichols, because she had been in a science fiction TV show, crossed over to reality, working for the government space agency, NASA. I know when one of the other characters died, they cremated him and sent his ashes into space. And more recently, William Shatner, who was also in Star Trek, became one of the first people to use um, uh, one of these space tourist programs to be taken into space and brought back. It's a little bit strange that people can't realize that they were simply actors and that they have no association with space. I'm not sure if it's the same with other TV shows, but certainly that kind of thing doesn't really happen here. And actors don't want it to happen because they don't want to be remembered only for one role. In fact, they want to be remembered for other things that they've done as well. Anyway, perhaps to be typecast or pigeonholed or remembered for only one particular thing is not so bad. I mean, at least if you're invited to conventions and you get involved in some bigger project, at least it pays the bills. Anyway, Star Trek was certainly a pioneering program in its time. It was one of our very first uh, science fiction dramas, which lasted for quite a few years. And when I say our very first, it certainly wasn't British, but yet it came from the English-speaking world. Grace Nichols, as she was born, was the third of six children, and she was born in 1932 in Chicago. She was born, of course, into a typical black family, and this is what makes her even more special, because when she joined the Star Trek crew in the 1960s, she was probably one of the first uh, female actresses to land a very nice job. Now, she faced a lot of racism. and She was a friend of Martin Luther King, and apparently she thought about quitting quite a few times, and he told her, no, you should stay in that role because uh, you need to be portraying and making a way for other young black actresses. In her role as Lieutenant Uhura, Nichols kissed the white actor William Shatner in the November 22nd, 1968 episode, which was called Plato's Stepchildren. And this episode is apparently the first example of an interracial kiss on television in the United States. Although several other examples do actually exist, the Shatner Nichols kiss was seen as being groundbreaking, even though it was portrayed as having been forced by aliens. 
you really have to watch Star Trek. I mean, it's really funny because it's one of these shows where everyone falls in love with the captain. It's the 1960s, of course, and the captain is irresistible and women are simply portrayed as being weak. I'd like to think a lot has changed since then, but I'm not so sure it has. She wrote a biography. It was called Beyond Uhura, Star Trek and Other Memories. And in there she talks about a letter of someone who wrote to her. And he said, I am totally opposed to the mixing of the races. However, any time a red-blooded American boy, like William Shatner, his part was called Captain Kirk, gets a beautiful girl in his arms that looks like Uhura, he isn't going to fight it. That's terrible, isn't it? My goodness me, what a terrible thing to say. Um, That's awful. It shows how racist some people were, and perhaps some people still are. People still talk about the case, um, uh, and of course people still talk about the fact that everyone fell in love with William Shatner, (laughs) which was a little bit strange in itself. Um, Star Trek was actually cancelled in 1969, but Star Trek lived on in other ways, and as you probably know if you have Netflix or I think Paramount, uh, Star Trek exists in many different forms and has continued over the years. It never really died. So, uh, Lieutenant Uhura, the character, has popped up. And this actress, Nichelle Nichols, she provided the voice in Star Trek, the animated series. She says in her autobiography about her frustration that she never became captain or was able to replace the captain uh, in the original series. She was in six Star Trek films and in some of them some of the other characters had progressed and became a captain but she never did. Uh, She co-starred in six Star Trek movies, the last one being The Undiscovered Country. After the death of one of the other uh, characters in 2015, and until her own death in uh, July 2022, she was one of four surviving cast members. The other three being William Shatner, who is the captain, George Taki, who <laughs> he's very funny, he's, uh, he's very outspoken on a lot of subjects, and he has a very, very popular daily Facebook page. And the other is Walter Koenig, um, whom I believe played the Russian guy on Star Trek, Chekhov. Her biography came out in 1994, and she talks a lot more about her acting before Star Trek. But of course, nobody remembers that. I think she's best known simply for Star Trek and being Lieutenant Uhura. So, yeah, she went to work with NASA. (laughs) I think that's hilarious. Americans always seem to be unable to tell the difference between Star Trek characters and reality. But it's good that she did a lot of work because as a black lady, she was very influential in promoting black rights and getting other people uh, to come out and be more confident at work. In 2015, she flew aboard NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. Oh, for goodness sake, she's an actress, not (laughs) not an astronaut, which analyzed the atmospheres of Mars and Saturn on an eight-hour high-altitude mission. You see, this is where I have a problem with things like this, because the rest of us have to work very hard to get into roles. But because of the part that she played as Lieutenant Juhura, she suddenly has all access to NASA. And that's a little bit unfair. 
and it's also a little bit illusionary because she had nothing to do with being an astronaut except in the TV studio. But still, her work with NASA gave significant focus um, to black women. Let's move on to the more exciting bits, her personal life. So apparently she was romantically involved with Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry for a few years in the 1960s. But unfortunately, he was also involved with somebody else. And her name was Majel Hudek. Now she's known as Majel Barrett. And if you've ever seen Star Trek, the recent ones like Voyager, The Next Generation, and the, these modern Star Trek um, episodes, she's the voice of the computer. So eventually Gene Roddenberry married her and uh, she was actually Christine Chapel, Nurse Chapel, in the original series. When Roddenberry's health was fading, uh, Nichols co-wrote a song for him which was called Gene, which she sang at his funeral. I'm not going to comment on that, but I can't imagine what that must be like. Um, Nichols, uh, Nichelle Nichols, married twice, first to a dancer, they divorced in 1981. Um, they had one child together, and then she married a second time. I wonder if I've got that right. It says here, Nichols married twice. First to dancer Foster Johnson. Oh, I see. He lived from 1917 to 1981. They were married in 1951 and divorced that same year. Johnson and Nichols had one child together. He was born in the 50s, and she married for the second time to a guy called Duke Monday, and they got divorced in 1972. Um, Nicole's younger brother, Thomas, was a member of the Heaven's Gate cult. Oh, I remember them. <laughs> they, they were the ones that thought that a spaceship was coming so they they cut off their genitalia and uh, killed themselves waiting for a comet to pass. And that was such a sad thing. That was her brother. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, that was very sad. And he kept referring to himself as the brother of Uhura. You see how messed up people can get with identities when they... They follow Star Trek religiously, and they're not able to tell reality from fiction. This is a very sad thing. Actually, um, speaking of not being able to tell reality from fiction, people who love Star Trek so much are generally known as Trekkies. And there are people here in the UK and around the world who've converted their entire house to look like the set of Star Trek. Um, it seems a little bit strange to those of us who are not part of this great illusion, but uh, Star Trek conventions are worth a lot of money. And it keeps the Star Trek actors going when there's no work. It provides a nice salary for them. Apparently, on February 29th, 2012, Nichelle Nichols she met with President Barack Obama. Um, President Obama had said that he had a crush on her when he was younger. Dear. <laughs> right, I see. Mm. To have a crush on someone means to want to date them, to find them attractive. The Coase also wrote, um, I asked about uh, that directly to Obama and he confirmed it. Obama also confirmed for me that he was definitely a Trekkie. How wonderful was that? Um, Nichols was a lifelong Democrat and a practicing Presbyterian. Oh, that's very American, isn't it? To state your, your voting uh, preferences and your religious ideals. Uh, we don't do that in the UK. Those things are considered to be very private, 
And the people who do reveal their religious practices are often shunned. Right, um, 2015 she had a mild stroke, uh, then she had dementia, and then she announced her retirement from conventions. Then there was a legal dispute over who was looking after her finances, of course. Um, uh, then there was a big fight about it, and she died uh, on July 30th at the age of 89. So uh, there's <clears throat> an asteroid named in her honour. <laughs> uh, she also has a place on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Is that where you you have to put your footprint or your handprint on the pavement? I think as uh, she was awarded uh, an award called the Golden Camera, Cult Star of the Century. She received an honorary degree from Los Angeles Mission College, the Life Career Award from the Academy of Science Fiction Fantasy and horror films, and she was an honorary member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Oh dear. Well, I hope that's a lesson for all of you, that um, if you're an actor, <laughs> you become involved in space travel, you end up as a teacher Joseph story. <laughs> there we are. That's something to avoid, isn't it? <laughs> So, uh, be careful you don't end up as a teacher Joseph story in one of these podcasts if you're doing something like this. All right, then, uh, that's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm a little bit over time, so I'll say goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>